This is an audio-visual podcast on microdistricts, the Soviet Union, and modern city planning, done by Ben Ross of Colab and Associates Limited. I am a human experience engineer, or basically a spatial planner, here in South Auckland, of Auckland, New Zealand. I have done advocacy on projects ranging from Monaco to the airport to Botany Rapid Transit System, down to smaller projects such as parklets and bus lanes. I can be reached at ben at colab.nz, and also there is where you can find my LinkedIn profile. So what we're looking at in this podcast is we're taking a look at the working from home concept, which has been uh, thrown around a lot by commentators at the moment as New Zealand into the post-COVID era and eliminated COVID itself. Uh, before that happened, there was a case of people working from home. And now that all uh, social distancing restrictions have ended, uh, people are free to return to the office space. Although at the moment, most people are finding that the that they don't want to. Well, not in so far as 40 hours a day, uh, 40 hours a week, five, well, five days a week, eight hours at a time at the minimum, and having to put up with the commutes, which are usually are half an hour or longer, so the definition of super commute, um, each way, each day that they have to work. As yours should be noted, when you um, hear this working from home debate, that you just need to be careful, is the person speaking from vested interests? those who might own the office tower, um, property developers, property investors, property managers, for example, might have a vested interest, whereas the worker might want to work from home where they can get up to 35% productivity gains. You also have to have other interests like the support services in a city centre like hospitality, how they are affected by it all, and then you just have some downright moments from those who should know better, such as the New Zealand Finance Minister, who should not be telling everyone to come back to the Wellington City Centre to work, especially if productivity is better if they're working from home or a metropolitan centre. So how do we get around this? And how did the Soviets work around this? Of course, doing this, as soon as they say the Soviet, some people are just going to go straight communism, and then that's it. Well, unfortunately, can't do much about those whose thinking and vocab just goes beyond one word. Or two words, actually. This is more looking at how the Soviets adopted their idea of the 15-minute city, which originally came from Paris in the 19th century, and how they did it, and then how it's percolated somewhat back into the Western world, although um, the Russians today are still best at it. So we're going to use... The Urban Simulator City Skylines with two cities I've got, a medium-sized city at 83,000, which is about 250 to 400,000 in real life, and a smaller city I've got currently underway, which is at about 35,000 or 90,000. So they're um, small to medium-sized cities. So um, we'll look at it from there because this is where a micro-districting would work best to start with. Uh, before going into your large cities. So if you're looking at it from an Auckland, uh, Auckland scale, sorry, a New Zealand scale, we're looking at cities like Hamilton, Tauranga, and part Wellington, and Christchurch and Dunedin uh, for our small and medium cities, whereas Auckland would be defined as a large city, so not covered here today, and you would need to break it down by its sub-regions. Now, the, now the, where the Soviet Union and its planning around micro-districts came from, where this was, I first picked up, was it was from a City Beautiful, or Beautiful City YouTube video, which I'll have linked up in the end screen, uh, sorry, up in the card above, and also in the description below. If you want to look more at it, they go into um, micro-districts and how it worked and how it played out in the Soviet Union, and how it could possibly work for the West. So this is my interpretation of it, looking at it from a spatial planning point of view. So let's dig in, let's get City Skylines open. 
and let's go at how um, City Skylines actually makes best use if you do your planning properly on the micro district. So we're going to start here with Palpatine City, which has a which is a medium-sized city at about eighty-five thousand, or about three hundred odd thousand, so the size of Wellington, Christchurch, and just a bit larger than Hamilton. I'll go into the Grand City of Slayer, which is thirty thousand, which would play out with Hamilton and Tauranga later. So here's my city here, and if I disable that, this is what the city looks like. It's basically based in a large in a valley. Well, there's the head of the mountains, and then you can see the river going down. So this is a river based, whoop, a river based city rather than a harbour based city. So if we come in, where I am pointing the map now is where the city started. Uh, sorry, wrong direction. So we'll just move that down. Where I'm pointing the map now is where the city started before it expanded out in this direction and then out in this direction. As we can see, as we come back out, let's come all the way, come all the way back out. You should be able to see. And it's not going to like much because I'm actually on the vertical, so it's not going to like it much. Come back out. Come here. You can see the you can see the intercity highway network that goes from left to right um, across. So from there to there. I believe that's it. So it's only two ways that goes. The railway spanning in all, all directions. Now, the way micro districts work is that each area. So if you come back out here, you can see the names in white. Each of these represents a district. So here you go. Zoom right in. So each each of this represents a district. And each district I can control its policies. So at the moment I've got city policies, which is city-wide. And then I can drill down here's the basic stats, um, and go specific for each district, which is which can be important because the city centre's policies might differ from a town, uh, sorry, a suburb or a centre, which then might differ again from an industrial area or even a major transport area like the airport. But it should be noted, even with micro micro districts, is that they all form together to then form a district, to then form a subregion, then to form the region, which is the city itself, and then you go into regional beyond that. So it's all intric intricately linked together, often through its transport system. As I said, there's the highway network, one there, one there, and then it comes up and around and over. And then goes out here, and you got the railways, uh, railways beyond that. And this was the starting area, so you've got a highway there, and a link in there. So with micro districting, the micro districting, the idea is to create near self-sufficient districts, mini districts, or districts themselves. So not quite sub-region. And definitely not region and interregion. It's great, self contained so that all but say maybe your work should be accessible within your mini district, if not your district. So, if I was to look at a mini district at Auckland, the mini district would be um, Papakura. So, I should be able to get all my basic amenities from Papakura. If I was to go out to district, then that would go. That would take me out to Monaco City Centre. Then beyond that, the sub-region, which is South Auckland. Then the region, which is Auckland itself. Then inter-regional, which is the Upper North Island, which is Northland, Auckland, Waikato, and Bay of Plenty. So that's how it plays out there. So the point 
behind the micro district is all my basic amenities should be available basically within if not 800 meters then no more than say 1.5 kilometers from where my home is and 1.800 meters is the maximum walk up distance to a transit stop bus or rail 1.5 kilometers is how far you go with a bike on most occasions or a feeder bus to catch a sub-regional or a regional transport uh, mode to move around those respective areas. I think I've got a small problem of a... no I don't. It's fine. So let's drill down into the dynamics of a micro district. In fact in this case I think we're going to be looking at a district to start with because it's going to be two, three districts. Um, three districts that work together, although we can see some um, micro parts of it in a minute. So this is the area we're going to be looking at first. Now it's bordered by the main road that connects the two motorways. So it basically forms this area here. So it's three different districts as you can see and if I was to come back out into district mode you can see them there, there and there. So as we come in a little bit more you should able to pick out the urban form. Residential commercial we actually have a transport hub here so we do have a transport hub available in this district with some civic infrastructure to also service that district and then you have your amenities in this case we've got region wide amenities such as amusement park and a national park but you've also got your basic amenities as soon as you find one your park here your local stores so uh, drive-in restaurant there and if I can find one your school there it's time 2 30 in the morning and then the high schools beyond that if I was to drill down into transport so let's bring up the transport map you can see how the transport works so the transport I use from you can see, so the transport I use is buses and trolley buses in this case form the uh, form the um, intra mini district or district connections. Periodically, a bus might go across the region, and that will be then backed up by a busway. Um, to go across the region, you'll usually in this instance have I've got metro running. If I come back out, you will see the metro lines go crisscross to go across the city. In other cases, we can use heavy rail, and in the other city, I'm going to pull up monorail. So, your transport is equally important as well. In fact, if I go to bus, take this off, actually, if I disable that fully, there we go, you'll see I've set it by prefixes, which will determine. Um, how I set out usually the prefix three buses so that your beginning number is your feeders Your twos are your standards and your ones are your big metros and that will usually determine of course your feeders feed into a transit hub your standards would then um, Come back that up if not they'll usually be running around a sub region and then your big Metros usually go across region So, we drill down, and we'll now shoot into the zoning. So, residential, commercial, we don't need to worry about industrial office. You can see where the residential sits, but you can also see where commercial sits as well. So, in this case, it's light commercial. And it's within each square represents, I think it's 18, 8 square, 8 meters. 
so you do not have far to go for your basic amenities even for work because some of these are hotels this is a tourist area as well um you don't have far to go for work as well remembering with the micro district you are creating um a situation where all but your work in most cases is within um walking or transit distance work can be outside the micro district but nine times out of uh, nine times out of ten will usually be within the micro district if not the district itself if we come over to here again residential and again this time commercial you also notice you probably notice a road hierarchy starting to play out as well which also impacts the district we go up to this district which forms the hub this mini district which forms the hub again for this area for this district as a whole so for these three areas and the reason why this forms the hub is um you've got two transport hubs here so bus metro bus intercity you can see that residential is nearby commercial nearby again civic nearby so these people can get to work and if those coming from the other two districts need to they can catch the bus to come over then as we go back out we've got sub region which now we've got the city center here as well so that's going to be regional so um you've got here 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 and here are able to flow into here and they would use um, sorry This is where the metro starts kicking over. And then for region, is they can all come into the city centre and downtown, or if need be, for industry. So if I shoot over, he over here, again, there's your resident. This is another dis uh, uh, micro district. The district itself would be this area. So watch your commercial zonings and where your office zonings are this time. Again, your residential for this for this micro district, backed up by some just a very small amount of commercial this time. So you can get your most basic of amenities. Again, public transport is available. Connecting it up then to serve and then re re repeat and rinse again there's another micro district there's its commercial repeat rinse for this area in this case it's along here and again if you want to drill down to really small over here if i want to re come down this side so again repeat rinse residential there's the commercial now the center for this one the sub region so this is another sub region in its own so you can see where the local commercial is servicing the areas here just also got to remember in this case we're also servicing a university so you just got to remember that as well but the center in this case so if you're looking at the equivalent of monaco is across here and here so there is the center for this sub region there is the center for this district there's the city center itself for the entire region there is the commercial for this mini district there is the commercial notice how the blue changes for this area So your mini districts with a small amount of commercial to then your districts which districts or sub region which might have a high density density hub usually backed up by uh, rapid transit rather than feeder buses followed by then the region itself which is then of course your city center and then your transit plaza with feeder buses metro uh, standard metro buses and then your metro rail whether that's metro rail itself light rail heavy rail or monorail
So now we will pop into um, a smaller city and see how many districts replicate themselves on to form districts, subregions, and the region itself. So I've loaded up the second city, the Grand City of Sierra, which ironically takes on a Soviet-themed build, given um, what well, we're talking about, the micro district. But you can see, if we were to again go to our districts, this is a smaller city, 36,000, so about 100,000 in real life, so Hamilton Tower on a size now. And it's important this time around for the sheer fact is there's no metro yet. The metro's been set up in certain places, but there's no metro yet. So we're reliant on the buses, and there is actually a monorail system that it also forms as well. So that's just worth to bear note. So you're reliant on buses as your main way to get around with monorail forming a spine after that. But if we go to our districts again, you can see the districts that we have here. And in this case, we've got two so-called industrial districts with the airport here and a rural district up here. So what's great about the mini districts and what's pointed out in that city's beautiful YouTube uh, video, okay, that's linked, is that they are able to be replicated. You're able to add another mini district on to an existing mini district. And so many mini districts form a district, so many districts form a subregion, so many subregions form the region, and then so many region and then you have the interregion beyond that. So the great thing about the Soviet mini district, which is can be very easily replicated in city skylines if you're doing it in this format, thus it could be replicated in the Western world, is that they are able to be copy paste it's standardization cookie cutter you're able to replicate and add on for that to happen this is going to be reliant on your transport network so your road and rail so again if we just come into here this is where we started off you can see the residential you can see the commercial light commercial in places and then you can see we've built a hub. And there's some higher density residential nearby the hub. This is again replicated here in this very small one. It, is then it was then replicated here. Again, there's another hub floating around. This time, I think that's bus. Uh, what's this one? That's bus metro. So the metro thing there. So, so you can see again, there's your residential forming around. In this case, this is a transit orient. Most many districts should operate on a transit orientated development approach. Again, these the reason why this is separated is because I've got a tourism area forming, but these two go together. But they form these two many districts form this district here with Chancellor Square. You've then got Cooper District with a small amount of commercial there. So if we come right in. So there's your local commercial. So the so and um, Coleridge District work together. Again, it's built around another hub. You'll notice these are all built around hubs here. Um, even with this one, uh, not in this case, this is too small, but the buses are here. So there, um, for the, for this district, which is here, Rosewood, Sycamore Chancer, the hub, the main hub is here, but there is a secondary hub up here. For Cooper District and Coleridge District, the hub is here. For Salarian Shores, which contains a lot of the civic infrastructure. So we've got some big in civic infrastructure here. Um, it, the transport hub is, I believe, twofold. And I think the reason why this is, is because it's a high density area. I'm not going to be relying more on it. So in this case, we're reliant on the monorail. Oh, yeah, there's a small bus hub here. And I haven't sunk 
the monorail stations yet but you can see um this district forms around these t the these two uh transit hubs there so with the mini district oh and civic infrastructure wise so fire station has its own fire station each district police has its own police has its own school so high school uh elementary school sorry elementary high school which will usually serve district rather than the mini district it's just because of the size university which i believe is only just one at the moment uh, there's two at the moment but that's due to city size and have i actually put down any public libraries yet yes i have one two those but that's because they're extremely uh large in most cases with auckland the libraries would be much smaller and then healthcare. so medical cent most of these places will have medical centers and deaf care available so each district has its own medical with then a large hospital serving the sub region or region beyond that so again the mini district is self-contained in all its but most complex amenities for them if, and work for them which you would then start commuting across the sub region and region hopefully avoiding a super commute but this is when your inter or sorry intra-city lines start coming into play now replication so we'll spend this last bit on replication each of these districts is a cookie cutter of another so palpatine park started first chancellor square started next following the monorail line so it's following a transport motor then we did sycamore district and rosewood as an extension so they're in uh Solarian shores i believe no that was the most recent coleridge was done next and then soviet heights beyond that these industries done on demand yeah and as i said Solarian shores was done beyond that so each mini district is replicated so it's got its own residential it's got its own uh, commercial for local amenities in some cases it will have its own offices or higher density uh, commercial especially if it is building around a transit hub as, as we see there here and part here and here and then it has its own civic infrastructure such as they have its own self-contained schools, high schools, which might be shared with the district, basic health care, with then hospitals serving the sub-region or region as a whole. And so this is able, you're able to translate one district one on top of the other as the city continues to grow and spread out. Now, if your zoning is done properly, intensification is allowed as well. When the housing stock is replaced, housing stock typically lasts 50 years optimum. So between the 30 and 50 year mark, when you're renewing your housing, um, this is when intensification will usually um, undertake itself. So you can, and, but you'll notice they're not super tools. You'll notice none of these are super tools. Very few are super tools. Most of these are mid rises, if not low rises themselves. But yet they contain a high amount of population. So if I was to go back out for Chancellor Square, she's got 7,617 people with enough capacity. But um, there's your household capacity and workers. That's just having a jank out. I need to reset that. So there's your capacity there. If I was to repeat this exercise with Coleridge. So that's telling me I'm going to need another district or I'm going to need to intensify. Whereas if I go back here, I've got um, plenty of worker capacity, but I'm saying to run out of residential capacity. And if I go back to Pelting Park, which is the original, plenty of worker capacity, but we don't have enough residential capacity as such. The reason why commercial will be up is it's reformatting itself. 
And if I go to Soviet Heights. So you can see what each, each mini how each mini district is working. So still mainly a lot of residential. Commercial will fill itself up with the existing jobs in place. But each district is able to be replicated one onto it's standardized. And this is where now your road hierarchies come in. Sorry, there's a huge big zeppelin in the road. So in this case, the monorail forms the backbone, although we've got buses as well. And so you'll notice that each district is usually a transit-orientated development. The primary way of getting around is by transit, walking, or cycling. But to travel between each district is usually the it would be the monorail or the buses. And from time to time, as you can see across here, shadow of a blump, we've also got the cycling and walking network. But you'll notice the road hierarchy, and I will take it from here, from because Chancellor Square and Cooper District are one of the best in doing it. You will note, I'll put the zones up, look at how the road hierarchy is formed for each mini district. Connecting each district is a six lane road. You will notice I do not have any development along them apart from maybe the old periodical civic infrastructure. But the big six lane roads connecting to your interregional intercity motorway form the spine. You can see there's buses on them as well. They form the spine. So if I came right down. They form the spine. And we've got a monorail next door. Notice, there's my walking and cycling. There's my transit. Notice I've got no development backing from the district backing onto it. None. It is kept free of residential. It is kept free of commercial. It might have office. And it's kept free of industrial. So you're not creating conflicting movements. It is kept free. But the transit hub will definitely connect up to it. As you can see, we've then got a smaller... Uh, once you've finished your six lane, you then... I think this is a six lane or two running between two districts. In this case, we've got a smaller six lane road. Backed this time by commercial of the two districts. Oops, sorry. But, so in this time, we, allow, we can allow commercial and office to back onto it. But notice there's no residential backing onto it. And as we come out here... And in this case, we've got civic, large civic infrastructure connected to it. Your large civic infrastructure, like schools and hospitals, can sit on the six-lane road, especially if it's near a transport line, as we see here. Uh, which way are we going? Again, transit hub. So, backing onto it. So, again, there's nothing on it. And when we do connect to it so again in this case it is commercial um, and office again no residential so if I just allow to so it's um, so that's how you do it sorry if I just gave you one word so you wrote out your big six laners or four laners coming from your motorways and then connecting up the districts and often there will be a mass um, if you're doing above ground transit such as monorail they will often be nearby it as well because they form um, the hubs to which all your transit comes into but not always not always sometimes they can be offset I think this is only a four laner uh, is it a four or six uh, she's only a four Okay, so that's your hierarchy. That's your big connecting roads. Your next step is then your um, feeders. So in this case, you got the big six lane. This would be classified as one uh, from here across to here. This would be one feeder. So you're coming off your six lane to your four lane to feed into the district, and then this would. 
again this is replicated although this is a six laner in this system so it's actually technically a bit too wide this is again replicated here so there's your big six laner connecting across the region here's your feeder that connects that has then got the districts themselves again with the mini districts no development this can house development and again you've got it feeding across you zoom in so you go from your six down to your fours and they form they will technically form the boundary of a district which in this case if i come back out they do so we've got this case we've got a six lane and a four lane forming the boundaries uh, no not that case then from there you drop down to your two laners so you come right down and this is where and your tiny rows and this is where your residential sits inside the mini district again you'll notice i don't have it on the larger roads so again from motorway to six lane to four lane to your two lane and how each district is written so when you're building your six lane would extend and your transit would extend out so if you come back out would extend out so you extend your big six lane and you can see where i've got the monorail currently ready to go so your six lane goes out your four laner comes after that and off and then usually a transit hub is set down and then you start building around filling out your district from there again and each mini district is self-contained rinse and repeat as you move along your transit nodes whether it's mass transit or road and in some cases it can also be motorway so if we were to come down as we finish this off and this is what they did in the soviet union so we come off the intercity motorway so we're on the big six laner so i want to go so there we go again you'll see there's nothing on it so we're on the big six laner so we make our way off the motorway to a district that's further inside the city and then we come across to in this case there's another six lane but i've actually got it set for bus lanes which forms the border between two districts and you can see the transit running and we drop down again to a smaller four laner residential can end up on these if you wish so come down and then let's pick up one so this is a mixture of residential commercial and then you drop down to your two laners beyond that so that is mini just the soviet concept of the mini district how it can be used in city skylines and how the standardization of the mini district which are nearly self-contained for all but the complex amenities and, and usually industrial jobs can be used and then repeated because it's so standardized there's nothing wrong with standardization it could be then rinse repeated as the city grows and the older districts as growth occurs especially when transit orientated developments are in play so many districts work best with TODs they don't work with autocentric so as the, each a new mini district is added one the older one can be reformatted whether it's intensified or just replaced entirely by something else the point is it's cookie cutter it's standardized and the main point is whoops sorry as i ah oh, sorry i shouldn't be doing that 
the standardization allows for efficiency. Does that mean you're going to have the same looking home, with the same looking tower, with the same looking park, with the same looking district? No. The standardization approach is in the spatial planning and the transport side. How an urban designer or the community wants to design their interior in their little mini district is up to them, providing it complies with the spatial planning concept of the mini district. Because you go mini district, um, then say about three mini districts form a district, so many districts form the sub region, and so many sub regions form the region, and then beyond the region is the inter region, or as the Russians call it, the oblast. So the Soviets had it right. The Soviets had the 15 minute city concept right through their mini districts. Maybe we do need to take one out of the Russians' books when it comes to sp not urban design, but spatial planning to achieve the 15 minute city that we are so looking for. Because if everything's provided to you um, locally, all but your, say, industrial jobs or your complex jobs, then it might have better environmental effects, better mental health effects, better productivity, and a better work-life balance. So what do you think? Could the micro-district concept be, or the Russian version of the 15-minute city, be the Bianca we are looking for? Could Soviet standardization actually help the West achieve more sustainable cities. I leave that for up to you to work out. This is an audiovisual podcast on the micro districts, a Soviet Russia or Soviet Union concept used to allow standardized spatial planning while allowing for efficiency, amenities being close by, and the mitigation or elimination of the super commute. Again, if you wish to open dialogue, leave a comment or some feedback, you can contact me at ben at collab.nz.